You've got a very important deadline this upcoming week on March 15th. The FISA surveillance tools, certain FISA surveillance tools will expire. Do you have the votes, do you believe, to actually expand these surveillance tools? Where does this FISA reauthorization go next week? Now is our time to actually look at what needs to happen with the court itself so that we don't get another Carter Page. We don't get another president like President Trump is a candidate and his president was attacked by rogue cabal at the, at the DOJ abusing the FISA process. We've been working on this for over a year and a half and I think the House right now is in no position to pass anything that doesn't have some actual Title I change, which is the actual court itself, so that we can protect American citizens in sensitive areas. That's being worked on. I've been working on that through the week. Weekend. We're continuing to work on that. I really wish that the Senate over the past year, had, they'd been in the majority, had had more uh, hearings and stuff on this because from the minority position, we've been working hard and now we need to help to help this president and to help any future president or any political opponent not have the FISA court abusing their rights. So it sounds like you don't have the votes to clear a clean FISA next week. No, I don't think we do, and I think that's a good thing. I think that's good for the president. I think it's good for the country because, Maria, how many times have you and I talked about yeah. the fact that people have lost trust in the Department of Justice? They lost trust in the FISA court. And remember, the FISA court was put into place from the in late in the 70s because of abuses in the intelligence system and abuses among law enforcement. Right. Does that not sound familiar today? Well, if it was worth reevaluating then, we need to reevaluate now. Well, you're right, and we keep talking about it. And I've been talking about it with Lindsey Graham as well. Now. Uh, uh, Senator Graham has started interviews, I guess, but is it too late, you know, too little too late? I mean, are we going to actually get accountability? My audience wants accountability, and so far we haven't seen many interviews, uh, you know, subpoenas from Lindsey Graham. Well, I'd like to see more, and I think that's the thing we've been pushing for for the last year. In the House, we've been at the tip of the spear. We fought sham impeachment. We fought Mueller. I mean, we have done this all day. And so I'm, I'm hopeful that with the majority in the Senate, they're going to continue that. I'm glad to see that they finally got started. I'd love to see more of that. It was amazing this past week yep. that when uh, Ron Johnson was actually, uh, Senator Johnson was trying to actually do something, that Mitt Romney all of a sudden decided he was going to possibly object to subpoenas. We've got to get over this. This happened in abuse of our system, and it is something that goes back to the very integral part of what the DOJ does, especially when it comes to political folks. And when they attack President Trump, when they attack then-candidate Trump, and tried to cover it up and use FISA, there's nobody in this country that could be immune from that kind of abuse. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Senator Romney. I'm going to talk about that with Kevin McCarthy coming up, uh, GOP minority leader. Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you, sir. Thanks so much. Is mm. Biden better for you to run up against President Trump, or is Bernie better? What do you like? better governor okay I'll tell well between uh, I haven't endorsed between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders but I'll tell you this Donald Trump is afraid of Joe Biden uh, otherwise Rudy Giuliani who's a very busy person doesn't run around Ukraine and the president doesn't get on the phone uh, with Ukraine talking about Joe Biden unless he's afraid of Joe Biden and if you're running against someone you're afraid of, that's a bad race to be in, Maria. <laughs> President Trump is afraid of Joe Biden. Bottom line. That's what the governor just told us a few minutes ago. You called it on this program. You said that the Democrats are clearing the decks uh, for Biden and they're colluding against Bernie again. They are all getting behind Joe Biden right now. Mitt Romney's already, you know, he almost stopped uh, any, any investigation into Biden, into Hunter Biden, right? I mean, he's, he's going to be the vote that goes against President Trump. He's made that clear. Yeah, but this should not be about politics. Any elected official that uses their office or has their children who uses their office to, to get economic gain, where you're getting $50,000 a month, how many Americans don't make that in a year? And you have no experience whatsoever. And the only reason you have that job is because of your father, and your father withholds money to a country to change the investigation of the people that hired you? The Democrats should be the for first person investigating this. All they've done with their majority is investigate. But the only place they wouldn't investigate is Joe Biden because they care about politics instead of the rule of law. Well, we've been waiting on Lindsey Graham to call somebody down to subpoena Hunter Biden, subpoena uh, somebody around this store. We haven't seen it yet. Are you gonna, are you, is this going to be investigated or not? Well, you got Senator Johnson out there uh, asking for a subpoena, and rightfully so. And this shouldn't be about politics. Mm. This should be about the rule of law, and that's exactly the way it should be carried out. I would like to see Democrats care about this, too, and vote for this. Senator Lindsey Graham.
today. Once again, talking out of both sides of his mouth and speaking in only half-truths, uh, we have yet to find a single, single achievement on the part of Senator Graham, legislatively or politically. A disaster for the Republican Party, Graham seems willing to, well, risk the presidency, the Senate, and the House uh, just for a couple of sound bites that he gets to pedal to the national left-wing media. Rhino Senator Mitt Romney today, by the way, not supporting Ron Johnson's investigation into uh, Hunter Biden and Ukrainian gas company Burisma. Here's what the ultimate Romney Rhino called the investigation. There's no question but that the appearance of looking into Burisma and Hunter Biden uh, appears political. And I think people are tired of these, uh, these kind of political uh, investigations and would hope that if there's something of significance that needs to be evaluated, that it would be done by perhaps the FBI or some other agency uh, that's not as political as perhaps a, a committee of our, uh, of our body. Well, that was, uh, as I said, the ultimate Romney rhino blathering along. Uh, we'll take up uh, how that worked out for him uh, as we take uh, the issue with our A-team coming up. Senator Johnson threatening to subpoena uh, documents related to Hunter Biden's role on the board of Burisma. Romney, a member of Johnson's committee, hasn't said if he'll support that subpoena. But we will remind you that Romney's former top advisor, Joseph Kofer Black, in 2012 in his campaign, served on Burisma's board of directors alongside Hunter Biden. Also, it was only weeks ago that Romney was supporting Hunter Biden's testimony uh, and uh, in exchange for John Bolton's testimony and the Radical Dems impeachment sham. Uh, these, uh, uh, the FBI dropping investigations uh, of terrorists and <laughs> apparently had plenty of people to uh, harass, assail, and attempt to overthrow the president of the United States for a period in excess of three years. Myself included. I can speak from personal experience. You know, I think the FBI has a lot of problems and a lot to answer for right now. They've missed terrorist attacks that they, they really just seem like the Keystone cops and they couldn't really pay attention to those. And yet, as you point out, at the same time, they devoted an enormous amount of resources into something that they knew from the very beginning had nothing to it. Why? Because they wanted to take down President Trump and they were going to do it by taking down everybody around them. That uh, this agency that once was storied, that was the stuff of legends, is now uh, the, the subject of, I, I mean, investigations. Mm -hmm. The political corruption of that agency, KT, uh, is overwhelming. It, it remains so. And we are watching investigations proceed, but at a snail's pace. Uh, it's as if uh, we don't have our heart in the right place. This is an agency that has been out of control of the American people for a very long time. The respect for that organization is all but gone. I always thought the FBI were our friends and we were on the same side until they came knocking at my door unannounced and tried to set me up with a perjury trap so that I would either plead guilty to a crime I didn't commit or I would say that others committed crimes which I knew they didn't, including potentially even the President of the United States. I think the FBI has a lot to answer for. I am very frustrated at what seems to be the slow pace in investigating the investigators. And even though all these reports keep coming out, one excuse after another, one delay after another, I think it's time to clean that house and shake the foundations. Your thoughts, Jim Hansen? Amen. Let's do it. I mean, it's, it's sad to watch that these political witch hunts are going on against President Trump by people who put their partisan politics ahead of their sworn responsibility to do the business of the American people. So uh, at this point, we have investigations that we keep hearing about. It would be a blessing for the American people to know that that will not be tolerated by putting some of these people in shackles and frog marching them out the front of that building. I think this is where I get to say well said, both of you. <laughs> FBI personnel under disciplinary review in relation to their work on FISA applications accordingly should not participate in drafting, verifying, reviewing, or submitting such application to the court while the review is pending. Bosberg adds that the same restrictions apply to any Justice Department attorney under disciplinary review, as well as any DOJ or FBI personnel who are the subject of a criminal referral related to their work on FISA applications. It isn't reform of any kind.
Joining us now, President Trump's personal attorney, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, a uh, great American and host of the Common Sense Podcast. Rudy, great to have you with us. <laughs> Judge Bosberg, I'm great. I, I'm, I have to say this is one of those days that kind of keeps your blood pressure a little higher, I assume it <laughs> yeah, is. right. Because Absolutely. I, I mean, we're watching a whitewash here across the, uh, the spectrum, whether it's the FISA courts, oh. whether it is uh, the, the FBI personnel involved. They can't apply for The people involved before can't apply for a FISA warrants. Good to know, but it isn't reform, is it? No, no. If you, if you make a false statement on a FISA application, you should be prosecuted for perjury. Uh, that's the only way to assure the integrity of the process. Look, I know a lot about the FISA court. I was there for the beginning of it. Right. And it's a very, very special responsibility you have as a Justice Department employee. I've probably reviewed a hundred of them. It doesn't get reviewed by anybody. There's no defense lawyer. And prosecutors, even the good ones, have a bias, right? Right. So you've got, to, you've got to take that bias out of your head, and you've got to play both sides. And they obviously didn't do that. Uh, what Comey and his uh, gang of unbelievably embarrassing FBI agents did was they completely undermined the entire credibility of FISA yeah. and uh, took something that is supposed to be fair and even-handed and turned it into a, a hit job on, I, on, on President Trump. I have to say that Judge Bosberg strikes me as actually seeking to reform the process to those courts. But what really, uh, but right now, is still searching for an answer. Uh, the, the problem is that we've got three elements that are going to sunset from the FISA law uh, on March 15th and We've got a Congress and a Senate after watching what that court and that FBI and that Department of Justice did to the President of the United States are still willing to reauthorize it without reform. That, to me, is outrageous. It is. There should have been, a, first of all, there should be a hearing. You know, a really, uh, uh, a hearing Absolutely. about that, about the Pfizer abuses, so that the uh, members of Congress could get informed about the kinds of reforms that are necessary. I'll give you one that should at least be thought about, and that is to have a, uh, uh, someone representing the other side, to have someone who's the devil's advocate uh, to go over the work of the FBI and the DOJ. So we're not ever left uh, again in their hands because, look, the FBI and the DOJ in general are terrific. But Comey became a political animal. I was going to say a worse word than that. Right, he right, became a political animal completely. I mean, he, he was no longer a prosecutor. I mean, the, here, here's from someone who prosecuted probably some of the most significant cases of the last century. And I respect prosecutors uh, very, very much. The Hillary Clinton case was a complete fix. A complete fix. All the witnesses that you could have used against Hillary were given immunity. Whereas in the investigation of President Trump, every witness was put in jail. They trapped Flynn into perjury. Right. They gave every one of Hillary's people, 12 of them, immunity without ever trying to turn them on her. Whereas somebody like Weissman tortured Manafort, kept him in solitary yep. confinement for seven months in order to turn him. So you can't fool me. I know when a prosecutor right. is corrupt and it's a fix. Well, there's a, there's Comey fixed the Hillary investigation, and that came right from the White House. And he's that was that was a non-investigation from the very very beginning. That's why uh, that's why uh, the Attorney General told him, "Don't call it an investigation." She's at least being honest. Right. Ready? We got. We're over time, but I want to ask you very quickly, uh, Ron Johnson, sure. Senator Johnson is going after and says within the next month or two, he will have a report on his investigation uh, into the Bidens. Uh, your thought? My thought is I would take him very seriously. I would not I would not uh, discount the fact that uh, from what I've seen, and I hate to say this, he's w one of the few that seems to have the courage to face up to the fact that uh, these things have to be, crimes have to be treated like crimes, no matter whether they're committed by Republicans or Democrats. Sen and uh, we've got to change this double standard. Yeah. Senator, uh, I, I, Senator I would have Johnson. Confidence. I'd, I'd have confidence in it. Senator Johnson is the only one at this point in the Republican-led Senate who has such guts. Rudy Giuliani, no shortage Thank of you. guts from you. We appreciate <laughs> it, as always. Thanks so much. Thank you, Lou. Turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up.